we'll go ahead and get started with talking a little bit about Canvas. Um, specifically for cohort 2019, you might notice that there's been some changes um, since last year, um, hopefully improvements. Um, mostly in Canvas, you'll see that like you can just go into anything to log your points. Um, so like if you've done liftoff, if you're a first year student, um, you'll watch the videos and then when you're ready to go ahead and submit for your points, you would go under the cornerstone experiences and then attend liftoff and reentry, which is reentry is our spring orientation. So you'll go into attend liftoff and then you'll just submit your assignment. You can either upload a picture. If you took pictures during the event, you can write a little paragraph. I have prompts. You don't have to hit every single prompt. Um, although it is greatly appreciated when you guys have suggestions, especially when it comes to launchpad events. Um, but if you feel like, man, this event was perfect, you guys really hit it out of the park, no need to <laughs> like say like, oh, I don't have any suggestions. Like, it's all good. Um, and so you'll notice even today, under attend block launch pad events that this event is listed for five points. So after you're done viewing it, you can go ahead and submit for your points. Um, you might notice that like orbits, there's going to be one each month, um, both in the fall and spring semester, but it's only listed once. The reason for this is that we really wanna make sure that you guys are getting a diverse set of events in, um, especially within those first 50 points. Um, so we only have it in here once, but once you're once you've gotten your first 50 points, you can go ahead and start entering more Orbitz events under miscellaneous. There is kind of a competition in each cohort. So the folks at the top three amount of points will receive prizes at the end of the academic year. Um, something else worth mentioning is announcements. You'll notice that I'll send a lot of our emails for Launchpad through Canvas. The reason I do that is because if later you're like, oh man, I can't find that email that Brittany sent me, you can just log into Canvas and all the messages are under announcements. Do you guys have any specific questions about Canvas that I can help you out with? Great, um, let me know at any point if you guys have any questions um, and then I'll, I'll throw it over to Maggie. Um, let me stop sharing. Can, am I a co-host? Let me add you as that, apology. Perfect. Hi everyone, if I haven't met you, my name is Maggie Rayland. I am the professional development manager in the Block Career Center. So I am sort of your go-to person for career coaching and programming um, if it falls under the Career Center. So I'm sure I'll get to know all of you better this semester and um, in the spring as well. But I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about Handshake which is something that you need to become very familiar with, um, as well as doing just a really quick overview of LinkedIn if you don't have one or if you wanna brush up on your, your LinkedIn, um, we'll go over that today. So let me share my screen. Brittany, can you see that okay? Yes. Perfect, okay. So Handshake is our uh, career platform that we use for everything in career services. So that's where you can make appointments with our staff. That is where you will find out about upcoming events. It hosts this amazing job board where you can apply for internships and full-time jobs. Um, this year, for the first time, it will also be how you go to our career fairs. So we are doing virtual career fairs this fall probably in the spring as well, but we're, you know, we're going to start out with the fall and see how everything goes. Um, and basically you will log on to Handshake, you will RSVP to a career fair, and then you will come back and do little 10 minute sessions virtually with our employer. So it's a little bit different this year than in past uh, events that have been in person, but we're excited and um, you're actually going to get a little bit more time with the employers, which is really cool. So yeah, so I'm just going to go over the basics of Handshake. Please stop me at any point if you have questions or you want to see something specifically. Um, I have pulled up, I don't know if any of you know Erin Ireland, but she just uh, graduated. She was our student coordinator in our office for a couple of years. She has a really nicely filled out Handshake profile, so I wanted to use hers as an example. But um, so this is kind of the homepage of Handshake. Uh, it's basically, if you click on Career Center up here on the right, you will get to this page. 
And so this is where you will create appointments, go visit our resources library, um, you can take surveys, um, let us know your first destination plan. So this really only applies as you get closer to graduation and you have a full-time job set up, but you'll be able to click on that first destination button and take a survey about what your full-time plans will be post-graduation. Um, so one of the things that you guys will all need to learn how to do are to create appointments. So you will just hit schedule a new appointment and you will select the Block Career Center because you are all Block students. You will select the topic that you want to talk about. So that might be a resume review. And then you will be prompted to schedule an appointment with one of our staff. So it's super easy um, and definitely because you all have to do these for points and uh, for your launch pad requirements, you wanna make sure that you get familiar with how to schedule appointments. So then the other thing that you are going to want to know how to do is to fill out your profile. This is especially important um, as we start getting ready for these virtual career fairs because employers will be able to see these profiles. And in addition to your resume, that is going to be the thing that they're looking at to make decisions on whether or not, whether or not they want to interview you, um, whether or not they want to encourage you to apply for their position. So you just wanna make sure that your profile is really filled out. So it's if you have filled out LinkedIn, you'll notice there's sort of a LinkedIn, social media, Facebook-like feel to this page. Um, you'll have your professional headshot, You'll have your degree when you graduate, your GPA. Um, you'll have all of your education here. It'll prompt you to go down and put in work experience and volunteer experience. Basically, the more filled out your profile, the better. And it actually will tell you how filled out it is. It's really tough to get it to 100%. You have to put in projects and classes and all these different types of things. Just get it as filled out as you possibly can. Um, so yeah, so this is just going to be, again, all of your work experience, extracurricular. You can put some of your coursework in there if you'd like, projects, um, and then like some of your personal uh, demographic information. So the other thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is upload your resume. So that is going to be in your document section. You can upload resumes, cover letters, transcripts, and then anything else. So like recommendation letters. Um, you can download a PDF of your LinkedIn and host it under other documents. So really just have all of those documents ready to go for the fall. Um, let's see. The other thing that I want to show you how to do is the job board. So you just click on jobs right here and it will start populating jobs and internships that you can apply for. So say you want to do finance and you want to make sure that it's in Kansas City, hit show results. And then you can start going through and clicking on the different jobs. Some of them will have you apply directly through Handshake. And so it's super easy. It'll just pull a resume that you have uploaded um, and you just send off your application. Some will have you go to an external site to apply. Um, it's very much like LinkedIn in that way too. So you just need to read the instructions on how they want you to apply. But definitely, especially as we get closer to fall, this job board is going to fill up with internship and full-time opportunities. So make sure you're in part-time opportunities if that's something you're interested in as well. So just make sure that you're, you know, pretty consistently checking out the job board and applying for things. You can flag them and then they go into the saved job section. You can check out your, you know, applications that you've sent at any point, favorited employers. Um, we also have something called on-campus interviews. They will be virtual again this fall, but basically, um, in regular non-COVID times, um, you would apply for a position, an employer would send you an email saying that you had been selected for an on-campus interview. You'd go back into Handshake, click on this button, and you would be prompted to basically go through and schedule your on-campus interview, and that interview would have taken place in our office. Um, so those will be virtual this fall, so we're still doing them, um, but you know, hopefully by next fall, will be back on campus and you will be able to schedule interviews in person that uh, the first round will be in our office. So that's super easy and makes it really convenient for all of you. The other thing that I want you all to see is this events page. So um, this is where we basically put all of our events. Um, you can see our career fairs and you can RSVP for them. So we have a work study on campus and part-time jobs fair coming up, accounting, our big business computing and engineering fair coming up in mid-September. But you'll be able to see all of our nursing or all of our fairs here, including nursing criminal justice. You're not gonna be interested in all of those, but um, certainly if you're accounting, plan on, 
on coming to the accounting fair. And if you're a general business student, definitely plan on coming to the business fair. Um, and then you can even like say by month, um, which doesn't, oh, there we go. Unclick career fair. Um, and you can see all of the different things that we have. So if you're an accounting student, next week we have an accounting boot camp with CBiz that you can attend. Anything that has this logo is um, basically a block event or a career center event. All right. What questions do you guys have about Handshake that I can specifically get into? Maggie, I have a quick question. Yeah. Let's say that I had a rough first semester and my GPA is a little bit lower. Do you recommend still putting that on to my Handshake profile or should I leave it off until I'm able to kind of raise it a bit? If you have below a 3.0, I would leave it off. I'd leave it off your resume and I'd leave it off Handshake until you get it back up above a 3.0. Um, most internships have a 3.0 requirement. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. And so, you know, it, it might deter an employer from really looking at your profile, looking at your resume if it has below a 3.0. Now, there are companies all the time that, um, you know, even if they have a 3.0 requirement and you have a 2.9, but you have a really good reason why you have that 2.9, they'll still consider you. Um, but that is a place to explain that more in a cover letter or an interview. Um, because a lot of times when you, you know, fill out an application or you put it on your resume, they just automatically toss your application because you don't hit the requirement. So definitely, um, I would leave it off if it's below a 3.0. Um, but anything above a 3.0 is great and definitely include it. Great, thank you. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have about Handshake? That was a quick overview. We also have on our YouTube channel um, a full walkthrough of Handshake and our other resources like Job Scan and Big Interview. Um, so you guys can check out our YouTube page as well. Okay, thanks, Tristan, for your question. Um, absolutely. Even if you are an incoming freshman and you're not quite ready to look for an internship yet, um, I would definitely still attend a lot of these events, even the fairs, because what we're doing this, which is a really cool feature of the virtual career fairs. So the employers might have said that they're only willing to meet one-on-one -on -one with juniors and seniors because that's what they're recruiting right now. But a ton of our employers are doing these group events where basically you can sign up for this group time and it's really geared towards freshmen and sophomores and you can come in and you're with you know 10 15 other students and you get to learn about the company and get a little bit of face time with that recruiter um but really the the answer to the question is networking is always something you want to be doing you can't start it too early if you go to a fair as a freshman and you talk to a recruiter and then you see them again as a sophomore and then you see them again as a junior they are so much more likely to bring you in and and interview you and feel really good about you because they know you they've seen you come to events over and over and again so absolutely um i think it's a good good decision to get your you know your feet wet jump in and and start Kind of getting used to talking to these recruiters because the worst thing that can happen is you know you're a junior it's go time you've never come to an event before so you're really nervous you don't know how to do it you don't know how it goes you don't know what those conversations are supposed to look like um and the nerves just get the best of you so definitely start early really good question so key things to put on your handshake profile as an incoming freshman so you know you will definitely have more high school information you can have high school information on Handshake, on LinkedIn, on your resume, until about your junior year. Um, as you're sort of entering your junior year, I think it's important to really try to start taking off that high school information and, and filling your resume, especially up with college information. But, you know, so for education, you can still list your degree at Block and you can put your high school on here as well. Um, if you've had a part-time job in high school, absolutely put that on here or any volunteer work that you've done. And then if you were part of clubs and organizations in high school, definitely put them on Handshake. Um, again, put them on there until you have enough college information to replace them. Good question, Sarah, thank you. Maggie, can all these students also put that they're members of Launchpad already? They should absolutely put that they're members of Launchpad. Um, it's a prestigious program and you guys are absolutely encouraged to, to shout it high from the rooftops that you were part of Launchpad and put it on your resumes and put it on LinkedIn, put it on Handshake, absolutely. Any other questions about Handshake specifically? 
Okay. All right. So we are going to switch over to LinkedIn. Um, so LinkedIn is sort of the Facebook of professionals. Um, and I'm going to use Erin again. She, she probably can see that I'm um, stalking her LinkedIn a little bit, uh, but that's okay. She's usually really happy to, to help us in this way. Um, but yeah, so LinkedIn is the tool that you will use for professional networking and um, connection making. So you will notice again, has a very sort of Facebook look. You can put a cover photo on. Um, I actually have the skyline of Nashville where I am from. So you just wanna pick something professional. So LinkedIn is not the place for you know, for the social stuff. Um, not really the place for social posting or anything like that. Uh, definitely wanna keep it professional. So I'm from Nashville. I have the Nashville skyline as my cover photo. Um, but then you wanna have a professional photo. So um, when you guys get to campus, you can have professional headshots taken in the photography studio at UMKC. I'm not sure what their, that operation is looking like um, with like social distancing and everything else, but um, during normal times, uh, you will be able to have a professional headshot taken anytime at the photo studio. You will also be able to get them taken at career fairs when we go back to having them in person. We always have a photographer at the career fairs because you're already dressed up in your suits. Um, so we have a photographer there who will take headshots. So you definitely want to have something professional, you know, kind of waist up or shoulder high, um, wearing something professional. Um, nothing that's like cut off or like you have your arms around people. Um, definitely just something that kind of puts your best foot forward. So then you'll notice Erin has her title right now. Um, so for you guys, it would be potentially like management student at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. So you kind of want to go with your student status on LinkedIn until you get a little bit older and then you might have your internship title or if you're doing a really cool part-time job, you might have your title there. But Right now, especially um, as like freshmen, sophomores, you would have what you're studying and the university that you're attending. So then the next part is you'll have a little about me section. It doesn't have to be super long. It can be anything from like two, three sentences all the way up to a paragraph. Um, but just like a quick little snapshot about who you are, what you're involved in, and potentially what you're looking for. So then the next big thing. Yeah, Melissa, do you have a question? No, it was a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Okay. Um, so the next big thing, and this is actually a really easy thing to fill out because you can kind of just copy and paste your resume over to this, but you'll notice that um, you will have your job titles and the places that you worked. And then Erin just started as an analyst at the Fed, so she will add bullets later on. Um, but you will have bullets describing your work duty. So if you guys haven't put a resume together yet, that's something that we can work on this semester. Um, but definitely, you know, it's going to be something that you're going to want to have nice, detailed, quantifiable bullet points um, to really show what you did in those positions. So this is a, a section that you'll fill out um, as you go. Then you'll have an education section. You can absolutely include high school on LinkedIn. The really nice thing about LinkedIn is, of course, a resume we really want you to keep to one page. Um, you'll have a one page resume like through college for the first few jobs post college. You, you kind of always want to have a one page resume um, until you get a lot of experience and then you can move to two pages. The wonderful thing about LinkedIn is that there is no cap on how long your LinkedIn profile can be. So you can put everything. Um, so even though I am many years out of high school, I still have my high school on here as well. Because again, this is for networking purposes. And who knows if maybe one day someone who I went to high school with is doing a job that I really think is cool and I want to get I want to do and I want to get involved with. So I might find them by having my high school listed on LinkedIn. So it's totally appropriate to have high school, at least your high school listed under your education on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, and then you can see Erin even went into detail about some of the activities and things that she was involved with um, at Holton. And then it goes into volunteer experience. And then this is a really cool section right here. So this is a skill section. I'm gonna pull mine up because I have it pretty filled out. Um, is it? I say that and then, oh, there we go. Okay. So basically you can put in skills um, that you have, and that can be, so for me, obviously working in career services, resume writing, career counseling, public speaking, things I use every day. Um, 
And you want to fill that out as much as possible because if you do any sort of job searching through LinkedIn, um, and I'll show you the job board here in a second, um, basically recruiters go in and when they post positions, they also post a list of skills that they want that person to have. And if they're doing any sort of sourcing on LinkedIn, this is a very searchable area. So if I'm a recruiter and I want to hire someone in human resources and I want them to have recruiting experience and like HR database management experience, I'm going to put those skills in and then people are going to start populating who also have those skills. So that's why it's really important to, to fill the section out. You can also receive endorsements from people. So as you can see here, I had 51 people say, yeah, she's good at resume writing and 47 people say, yeah, she's good at career counseling. Um, so you can also receive endorsements for, from people on your skills, which is a cool thing as well. Um, and then you can also have a recommendation section. So I'm sure all of you in high school or in college have had to, to get a rec letter for something. So LinkedIn has a place where you basically get almost like mini rec letters. They're usually just about a paragraph long, um, but you can have a boss or a coworker or a classmate or a professor um, basically fill out the short blurb about your work. So it's kind of this nice layer of authenticity to your profile. You know, you're saying, hey, I'm really good at this. And then someone else is saying, hey, they're really good at this. Um, so it just kind of gives that, again, that nice layer of authenticity. I'm not just saying I'm good at something, but someone else is saying I'm good at something. So definitely this is something that you can collect as you go through different jobs and classes and things like that. You also can have an accomplishment section. This is where you will list all of your organizations, honors and awards you've won. Um, if you ever have anything published, you can put that under there. Um, but that is sort of all of the pieces that make a really nicely filled out uh, robust LinkedIn profile. So you can also follow people um, sort of like on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can follow companies or accounts um, to kind of keep up on what they're doing. And those will populate on your, your feed, which looks like this. So you kind of have this feed where you will see things that people have posted and you can like them or comment, comment on them or share them, send them to other people. Um, so that is a cool feature as well. So then two more things I wanna show you. One is the jobs board. So you can search for jobs, apply for jobs. When you guys are outsourcing internships and jobs, stick to Handshake and then secondary to that LinkedIn. Um, and then maybe like Glassdoor or Indeed, the further out you get to like the monsters and the career builders, the more chance you'll have of coming across not legitimate opportunities. So on LinkedIn, recruiters have to pay to post positions here. So you're getting just a higher quality of positions and you're getting less, a less likelihood that you're gonna come across something sketchy or that's not a legitimate opportunity. So start with Handshake and then I would look at LinkedIn as well. So there is a job board. You can click on you know anything you want. So here is like an h and block position that I could look at. It'll pop up here. Um, and then you can apply. Uh, here's a career coaching position. If I hit apply, it'll take me to their external website. Um, sometimes, and I'd have to find one that lets me, most of these I think are gonna take me to an external website, but every once in a while you'll come across a position that lets you apply with your Handshake profile, or not Handshake, but LinkedIn profile. Um, so these are mostly, yeah, you have to go to their external site. But um, it'll say in apply and you click on that and then it just actually sends your LinkedIn profile with your resume to apply. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, a lot of these are just taking you to the external site, most of them. Um, but anyway, but LinkedIn has an amazing job board, something I would definitely keep a look at as especially you're moving towards full-time. You'll definitely find internships on here. Um, but I would say for your internship searches, Handshake is probably your best bet. So the other thing that I wanted to show you was the alumni page. So you are going to go to the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where you guys are all with us coming to school. And basically, this is the home page for UMKC. And you're going to click on alumni. So this is like the best way to network with uh, UMKC alums. So we have 66,751 UMKC alums on LinkedIn. So, okay, in the chat, tell me 
a company that is in Kansas City that you might want to work for one day. This is making sure you're listening check. Okay, PwC, awesome. So I'm gonna type in PwC. We have 43 alums who are UMKC alums who work at PwC. So I'm gonna click on PwC and then let's see. Okay, so the, another thing cool to check is that 25 of them live in Kansas City. Three of them live in New York, three live in San Francisco, two are in Atlanta. So you can also look by geographic region as well. So say, okay, well, I want to stay in Kansas City, so I'm going to look at PwC, at U uh, Kansas City people that graduated from UMKC. All right, so let's see. Okay, so I see Molly Dowd. She is a senior associate at PwC, and she just graduated a few years ago. So she might be a really good person to reach out to to say, hey, I'm currently an accounting student at UMKC. Um, I see that you work at PwC. That's a goal of mine. I would love to work at PwC. Do you mind if we jump on a quick call or I can take you out to coffee um, and I can learn more about your experience and just learn more about the company? It's, you'll notice as you get on LinkedIn that every once in a while you'll just get random people that message you. In my experience, I feel much more likely that I'm going to respond to someone who I have some sort of connection with. So if they're a Mizzou alum where I did my undergrad or they are a UMKC person because I've worked here for four years, I'm much more likely to connect with them and want to help them because we have some sort of similar background um, as opposed to maybe like just a totally random person who I've never met before, have no connections with um, and need something from me. So I have found that UMKC alums are usually like thrilled to hear from current students and want to help them. So this alumni section on LinkedIn is super cool and I would definitely use it to connect with, you know, students um, who have graduated within the last five years or so and they want to get, you know, reconnected with UMKC, you just have to ask. So LinkedIn is awesome. You will all need it um, to further your professional careers. So if you don't already have one, make sure you set one up. I'm always happy to help you with that and go over your LinkedIn profile, make sure you have all the pieces. Um, but yeah. All right, what questions do we have about LinkedIn? Uh, so I was, I was looking at my LinkedIn and it says, it like notifies me if someone saw my profile. And so mm -hmm. I was wondering if like other people will see if I saw their profiles. Yes, so that is a that is a privacy setting on LinkedIn. So you can see who has looked at your profile and they can see that you have looked at theirs. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. Like if you're out there and you're looking widely at people's profiles, don't worry if they can see that you looked at them. It's, they don't, people don't care because they know that it's just a feature of the site. Um, if you turn it off, it means, it just means that you then can't see if people are looking at yours. So I guess if you don't care to see who's looking at your profile, you can turn it off, um, but you can't like turn it off so that other people can't see you, but then you can still see other people. So just something to be aware of as you're kind of playing with your privacy settings. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering, cause I didn't, I didn't want to seem creepy or anything. So I was just going to ask your recommendation on that. Yeah, no, totally. Um, you know, so like if I'm looking at Molly's thing, she's now been notified that I have looked at her profile. Um, again, people just do it so much. They, you know, especially as you guys start to get closer to graduation and you're looking around and doing research, people aren't usually like too put off by it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What other LinkedIn questions do you guys have? Maggie, I just want to reiterate that um, when we have like panels, like so H&R Block, for example, they said this during the liftoff session that if you want to connect with them on LinkedIn, that you're more than welcome to. And I highly, highly encourage it. Um, later today, you'll see an announcement about um, Launchpad Orbits, which is our professional development series this fall. And um, I highly recommend reaching out to the instructors on that too. You can write a little, when you go to connect with people, you can write a little paragraph. Um, so you can just say like, hey, I heard you speak at the liftoff event for Launchpad. I would love to connect with you. And they will almost certainly connect with you. Absolutely. All 
All right. Well, if you guys don't have any other LinkedIn or Handshake questions, I will pass it back to Brittany um, if she has any closing thoughts for you guys or if you have general questions that either of us can answer. Um, since a lot of you guys are freshmen, um, and I'm pretty sure I said this in my video that you all watched over the summer, but um, I'll be setting up group appointments for all of our incoming freshman Launchpad students. They probably won't be until like late October, early November. Um, so just don't be worried if you haven't heard from me, from me until then. Um, but if you are older and like a sophomore, junior, or transfer student, and you, you should probably plan on getting in with me you know, ASAP so that we can meet one-on-one -on -one and make sure you're on the right path. Should we set up appointments for that? Are you an incoming freshman? Oh, sorry, or? yeah, I, I'm a transfer student. Oh, yes, then definitely. So yeah, if you're a transfer student, make an appointment with me on Handshake um, so that we can both check off the list of you've done your requirement for Launchpad, but also just to make sure that you're feeling ready for the accounting fair um, or the big fair, whichever one you're planning on going to, and uh, okay. kind of get on the right path. Okay, sounds good. Well, then I'm going to work on like the LinkedIn handshake and everything that we went over and then set up an appointment. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Maggie, so much for taking the time today. And thank you, Launchpad Scholars, for coming out. Um, if you have any questions at any point about Canvas or LinkedIn or Handshake, or you'll start to see throughout the year a couple more platforms that we sometimes use, um, specifically with the Career Center, so like maybe Big Interview or Job Scan, just let Maggie and I know at any point, and we can help you out with anything that you have regarding those platforms. Yeah, and as a teaser, we're also implementing a new mentor platform this semester called Wiser. It's well, it's hosted by Wiser. It will be called the Room Mentor Network, and um, we'll have really cool opportunities for you guys to have mentors. Um, so Brittany and I are still working out all of the the ins and outs of that, but that will launch this semester. So we'll be getting, you know, with all of you to see if you want to participate in that program. Certainly, if you guys are freshmen, don't feel overloaded, like you need to do all of these things, you know, kind of, you know, inch your way in a little bit. Um, but uh, certainly, we have a lot of cool programming coming up that we'll keep you abreast of. Great. Well, thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. So much. Happy weekend. Happy weekend to you guys, too.